Hey friends, Matt here, and in this video, I wanna show you a really cool way that you can create your very own step sequencer using only stock Ableton Live devices. Now, this is much easier to do in Ableton Live 12, but luckily, this is something you can do in any edition of Ableton Live 12 from light all the way through to sweet. So regardless of what edition you have access to, whether that's light, intro standard, or sweet, you should be able to follow along and do this yourself. However, fair warning, there are some kind of advanced and technical things going on in here, so make sure to take some notes, get ready, and let's dive right into it. So before we get into showing you how to create a step sequencer for yourself, here is just a quick example of a simple one that I've created. Here we have a drift synthesizer with a single note being sent into it, playing a kind of acid 303 sound. And here we have my simple sequencer. Let's open this up engage this, and here we have a bunch of controls. Here, for example, I can set the pitch of each of these eight different steps. So let's turn some of these pitches up and down. Let's turn off maybe this particular step at the end and this one, and then the rate is currently set to 16th notes, and here is the gate setting. I can increase the rate or decrease the rate to eighth notes. I can decrease the gate, so the length of each of the steps. And here at the end, I've also got the ability to quantize or snap the notes to the currently selected scale for the playing clip, which is E minor at the moment. By the way, if you want to grab this simple sequencer for free, it'll be on my Buy Me A Coffee page. There'll be a link down in the description where you can head to, and you can also check out the full sequencer, which I'll showcase later in the video. So let's go ahead and delete this simple sequencer here to start from scratch. And the very first thing we're going to do is get the expression control device. And this expression control device is available in every single edition of Ableton Live from light all the way through to sweet. Typically what this expression control device is used for is to map incoming MIDI messages like velocity or maybe pressure or slide in MPE to control any parameters inside of your session. However, there's also a really cool different mapping technique that allows us to send an incremental message every single time the device receives a new MIDI note. So now that we have our expression control device, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is now place a MIDI effect rack after this expression control device. In this MIDI effect rack, I'm gonna go ahead and create eight different chains. Let's open up the chain list with this little button right here, right click, create a chain, and duplicate this chain seven times, so we end up with eight different chains. Let's go ahead and rename these chains just so we know what we're working with. And now that we have each of these different chains, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the chain selector by clicking on the chain button here in the MIDI effect rack. And you can see that this basically allows us to select which of these chains is playing or processing notes at any given time. Currently, all of these are processing notes or MIDI information simultaneously, but we don't want that. Instead, what we want them to do is sequence in steps. To do this, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is see each of these little blue lines, I'm just gonna move them one after the other. So on step number two here, I'm gonna move this to chain one or zone one. Step three is zone two. And now what we can do is switch between these different chains by changing our chain selector here up the top. The next thing we're gonna do is come back to our expression control device and where it says source, that currently says velocity, I'm gonna open up this drop down menu, come down to where it says increment. Now what I'm gonna do is map this increment by clicking on this map button to the chain or zone selector here in this chain list. Next, I'm gonna change it from modulate to remote by clicking this, set the output range from 0% to 100%. And now every single time I send this MIDI track a new MIDI note, it will send out an incremental value to whatever I've mapped this to. However, it'll do so over the minimum and maximum range and divide this range into the number of steps that we have. So for example, here we're going over the entirety of the zero to 127 range for this chain selector and dividing that into eight even steps. So you'll see that every single time I send this a new MIDI note, this chain selector is gonna jump up so that we have eight even steps across this whole range. So now what we need to do is constrain this range to the range of our zones in our chain list. To do this, I'm gonna to go to the minimum and maximum values of this increment, set the minimum to zero, which it already is, and set the maximum to seven, which is the highest zone that we have here for our 
step number eight. And let's leave this steps value set to eight so that we have an incremental value of one every single time this expression control device receives a MIDI note. And in theory, we should now have it so that this chain selector here just increases by one and cycles through these eight different steps. So now that we have that mapped, let's just close up our expression control device. And before this expression control device, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is place an arpeggiator MIDI effect. Now what I'm able to do is send this MIDI track just one continuous note and it will spit out MIDI notes at the rate determined by the rate control with a length determined by the gate control. So let's go ahead and play our arrangement. Awesome, let's go ahead and hide this chain list. And now on each of our different steps, we can put some kind of device that affects the MIDI on that chain. The most simplest device we can put there is say the pitch MIDI effect. So let's go ahead and put the pitch MIDI effect on chain one. And what I'm gonna do here is just group this pitch MIDI effect to another rack with the command or control and G. Right click on this pitch control, map it to macro one, have it so we can only see a single macro by pressing these little minus buttons. Go into our mapping mode by pressing this M button and now I'm just gonna constrain the range of this pitch control from minus 12 to plus 12, just so that we have a little bit more of a constrained range to work with for our step sequencer. Of course, you don't have to do this, but uh, it helps if you're then starting to randomize these settings, which is something you can do with racks. So now that we have this, let's right click on this pitch control, map it to macro one. Let's copy this MIDI rack here with command or control and C, move to our second chain, paste it, and map this next pitch control to macro two, and then just repeat that for all of our different steps. And so now I've gone ahead and put this pitch MIDI rack on each of our eight different steps and mapped each of those pitch controls to independent macro controls so that now we get control over the pitch of each of these eight different steps. Now from here, you can also do things like what I showed with the simple step sequencer at the beginning of the video, where you can go ahead and add more macro controls available. And you can go ahead and map things like the speaker control for each of these different chains to each of the remaining macros to get a step on and off control for each of your eight different steps as well. <laughs> And then, of course, you can go ahead and just click the RAND button here to randomize each of the macros and get a random eight-step sequence. And of course, then you could use MIDI effects like the scale device to then quantize each of these notes to a scale. And you could even duplicate this sequencer rack here and then put different MIDI effects on it, like say a velocity MIDI effect to control further aspects of each of these eight different steps. And this is exactly what I've gone and done and expanded this out into a full step sequencer with velocity, pitch, note length, and step on off controls, as well as some cool additional controls that allow you to take the steps all the way up from one to 16 and allow you to play around with some of the settings of the arpeggiator as well. If you want to grab this rack that I'm about to show you, you can find it again on my Buy Me A Coffee page along with the simple sequencer, which you can get for free. So here you can see the full sequencer device and by default, it's set to 16 steps with a rate of eighth notes. And you can see to just kind of demonstrate this a little bit better, I've actually gone ahead and created a two bar long note here on the drift synth. And here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Let's go ahead and randomize the pitch here. Let's increase the rate to 16th notes. And we can also change the steps control here to get anywhere from one to 16 steps. Fair warning, it is a little bit fiddly. You might get some kind of doubling of certain steps, um, but just play around with the control until you get it to sit right because it is possible. There's not much I could do about this. <laughs> Here we've got the ability to also trigger a hold, which basically just means that I can send this 
track a single MIDI note and it will hold that MIDI note. And I've also added the ability to play around with the steps of the arpeggiator, as well as the style and some offset controls. So you can get some really interesting patterns. Let's fold up this pitch module here and take a look at the other modules. We have a note on off module, which allows us to, again, randomize which steps are on or off. So let's randomize this a little bit. Let's close this up. The next one is the velocity module, which allows us to change the velocity of each of the different steps. This is really useful if you have an instrument that has velocity sensitivity, for example. So let's go ahead and go to the drift synthesizer, set our filter frequency here to be controllable by the velocity. And let's come back to this velocity module and randomize the velocities of each step. Let's close up this velocity module. And lastly, we have a note length module, which allows us to set the length of each of the steps in a rhythmic division, such as eighth notes or 16th notes. And the proportion of these is also controlled by the gate control here in the main sequencer control. So let's go ahead and randomize this. And lastly, of course, we have the ability to quantize the pitches of each of the notes to the scale set in the clip with the scale awareness feature. So if I go ahead and change the scale of the clip to something like D minor instead, you'll hear we get a different output. or we could turn it off just by pulling this down. Now it is worth noting that because of the way this works with the expression control device in incremental mode, the pattern that is played by the sequencer will be exactly the same every single time when you restart the playback in your session. However, not on the re-triggering of every single MIDI note. Because of this, you might get some interesting and weird cyclical patterns. So I actually recommend resampling the MIDI uh, or the output sound so you can really control the output pattern that you get. If you wanna go ahead and download these racks and take a look at them for yourself, you can find them on my Buy Me A Coffee page. Links will be in the description. Or of course, you could go ahead and just create them yourself using the techniques that I showed in the beginning of this video. And don't forget that these racks are available in every single edition of Ableton Live 12. You do need Ableton Live 12. That said, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.